Today is stay positive. Stay positive. Yet is an yummy well. What differentiates the successful from the unsuccessful is the way they think. Your life cannot change until you change the way you think. The only way to change your life is through your mind. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it said, don't be conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I pray today that your mind will be renewed with God's word in the name of Jesus. To tell you how powerful the mind is, God speaking in Philemon chapter 1 and verse 14, he said, without your mind, he will do nothing. That means there are many things God wants to do in your life. You are fasting and praying, but God can't do anything because your mind is not connected. He said, look at it back again. But without thy mind, would I do nothing. So there are too many things God wants to do in your life, but your mind is what is stopping them. We have had too much spiritual warfare, but many don't know that the problem is mental warfare. If your mental system is poor, your life will be poor. Thinking is work. An average person knows what to think. You hear me? But to be the best, you must know how to think. The schools teach us what to think. But how to think is personal development. Whatever happens in your mind will eventually happen in your life. Your greatest investment is in your mind. It is not in estates. It is not in oil. Your greatest investment is what? Your mind. If you can manage your mind positively, you can manage your life. Yeah, this and the where people of God, winning, success, breakthrough, Prosperity, victory does not start around you. It begins inside your mind. It is what your mind can conceive and you believe that can happen in your life. As he thinketh, so is he. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Your life is defined by your mentality. Now hear this, possess all things are possible mentality. He said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him. Individualistic, Mark 3. He did say to them, do you understand what he said? He said, to him that believeth, if you can believe anything, there's no possibility. And from today, nothing will be called impossible in your life. Paul speaking said, I can do all things, not some things. Philippians 4.13. He said, I can do all things through Christ. That trust in me. To say I can't is to remain inside the can. Listen carefully. Your lot in life is a function of your thoughts. You cannot be thinking failure and enjoy success. You cannot be thinking sickness and live a healthy life. 
You cannot think like a pauper and become prosperous. <laughs> now listen, people of God, the devil is not your problem. Your problem is your mind. Do you hear what I say? Satan is not your problem. Your real problem is your mind. You can be born again, tongue speaking, spirit feed, and be a super failure. If you don't upgrade your mind. There were two brothers in the Bible. One was called prodigal son. And one was called the elder brother. All of you know, I'm not you know the story. You know the prodigal son? Now the elder brother was very good, pious, serve God, faith. I mean, those people who are very good, serve God, nothing to show in their lives. They are the prodigal son's elder brothers. Born again, lived clean, but stupid. Very stupid. This man, if you read Luke 15, 29 precisely, <laughs> when he came and they were doing feast for the prodigal son who has gone on a jamboree and came back, hear what he said. And he answered, said to his father, Lo, this many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. He was a good man. And yet, thou never gavest me what? Take note of the word kid. That I might make merry with my friends. Because the father killed a fat calf for prodigal son. But when he came, he was asking for a kid. See his mentality? A house that had calf, he was asking for a kid. I don't understand what I'm saying. He said, he didn't even give me a kid to be able to marry. Your father is a big God. You're asking for one room. They always stay in the flat. <laughs> if God, you can give me one room, you're a child of God. You can start from one room. He was born in Amindia, but never went back to the Amindia after that time. You can be born without a silver spoon, but you can live a golden spoon life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It starts from here. Children of God, it is what your mind can comprehend your life will ever show. There was a man called Lazarus in the Bible. His mind was so fallow. In Luke chapter 16, 20 to the 1, this man has a problem in his mind. The Bible said 20. And there was a certain beggar. Did you hear the certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, so full of sores, and desiring. Where do you desire from? Where does desire come from? And desiring to be fed with the crops which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dust came and licked up the earth. Where did he desire from? From where? Have you not Christians who say, I wish they can appoint my brother, he trained my children? And you're a child of God? So you, they can't appoint you? If that my brother can be appointed, I'm very happy. Let him train all our children. You are a disgrace to God. Complete disgrace to God. Your mind has a problem. Today I command that evil leave your mind right now. Watch what you are thinking as not to be a washout. He said, keep the heart without diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 4.23 Do you know your destination is a function of your imagination? Now here this is what the Bible declares. It said, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they have all one language and this they have begun to do and now nothing can be restrained from which they have imagined to do. How many of you have imagined yourself that you're rich? It's not the wrong thing in his Bible. If you imagine yourself to be rich, you can never be rich if you don't imagine it. Why will you be seeing yourself inside that house? Let me tell every Christian, there are some pictures that should not be in your house. Pictures have power. Don't put bicycle man with power in your house. You think it's, you think it's a drawing. It's a, it's a demonic picture. Because what you keep seeing, your mind will keep comprehending. Don't keep a child with tattered rag and say, it's my, I like drawing. Before you know it, you will live a tattered life. Can't you put a good... Some of you, even your skin scraper is frog. Why will you use frog as your skin scraper? Frog. Bungalow. Can't you... <laughs> Whatever your mind keeps seeing, that's what you become. You are putting somebody 
Who is so poor in front of your skin? When you wake up at the time, the first time pop up is a poor man. You have signed for poverty because your mind will be kissing. How many want to stay positive? You will never fail. Yeah. I'll tell you how to stay positive. How to stay what? And I'm going to give you number one. <laughs> forget your past. Forget the past. Forget what? Forget. If you want to stay positive, forget the past. You don't go forward looking backward. To replay your past is to poison the present. Paul speaking in Philippians 3.13. He said, brethren, I cannot myself to be apprehended, but this one thing I do, not God will do it for you. Listen, God will not do forgetting your past. You have to. He said, this one thing I do, you will do it. Forgetting those things that are behind and different to those things that are before. I press towards the mark of the Christ of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He said, this one thing I do, not God. You are the one to do it. So I'll forget my past. Say it like a child of God. Do you know not forgetting the past will stop God from doing a miracle? I'll show you from the Bible. Every time you hold on to the past, God cannot do what he has for you. Many of you are not are stopping your miracles from your mind. From where? Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. You may know it, but I'm going to show you something. He said, remember ye not the formal things. For if you remember, you are committing sin. Neither consider the things of old. Why are you remembering all the bad things that happened to your life? Behold, I was. So God will not do a new thing as long as you're remembering the past. Now, it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and live as well. That I'm going to give you a miracle to prove to the world. But if you keep remembering, you stop me. I pray this day, whatever has held your mind captive, lose his grip from you in the name of Jesus. Now, I'll give it to you because Jesus did not allow the judgment of men to stop him. Do you know Jesus suffered everything you think you're going through? I'll show you from the Bible. Some people of his time said his birth was legitimate. They said it. You're not born by a legitimate person because we don't know who is your father. So in case they tell you you're illegitimate, you're not the first. He came from a tribe, the Jews, that were hated. They were a minority. We experienced serious political oppression. The Romans oppressed them. So you're not the first to be oppressed. They called him all manner of names. They said he was a heretic. He was betrayed by his associate and sold for 10 pieces of silver. So you're not the first one to be betrayed. They treated him as a criminal. He was treated as a criminal. They said he was not supposed to be alive. They said, kill him. He was rejected by those he came to save. Yet in all this, he fulfilled his purpose on earth. And today the entire world is celebrating the unmatchable greatness of Jesus. There's nothing that is happening to you or have happened to you that did not happen to Jesus. That's what he said in Hebrews 12 verse 2. He said, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, Despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He said, Look to him. Follow his example. When they stripped him naked, he looked ahead. You can't go forward looking at the rear mirror every second. Now look at another person called Paul. Paul, the former persecutor, murderer, made a statement. This man killed. Just imagine Paul. If you are today, you will not be able to preach. Paul killed people, killed Stephen. He was the one that led the troop that killed Stephen. They said they drive the clothes and there's one young man called Saul. Now, so you will know that Paul was preaching where there were so many widows. They were looking at him and say, are you not the one who killed our husbands? Are you going to answer now? 
But hear what Paul says, 2 Corinthians 7 verse 2. He said, receive us. This is Paul speaking. I have wronged no man. <laughs> who, who, who is speaking? Who is speaking? Okay. You, you are still remembering what they told you you did last year. He said, I have wronged no man. I have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. Whatever you cannot change, you forget. Stop killing yourself about some inevitable situations of life. If you must stay positive, you must forget the past. Shout hallelujah. The past is over. The past what? Stop living your life looking in the rear view mirror of your car. Every great man in the Bible had one told story or the other. Moses was a murderer. Was a what? He did not allow his past to determine his future. David with all his mistakes, yet God said he's a man after his own heart. As 13 verse 22. God never consults your past to determine your future. So here. Have you been hurt? Criticized? Betrayed? Failed? Get over it. What did I say? Get over it. The greatest days of your life are before you. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. Shout a believing amen. amen. Send me, I will look forward. I will press on. And I will stay positive. Say one more time. I will look forward. I will press on. And I will stay positive. Say one more time. Don't allow the things that happened to you yesterday put you down. If you had a setback, then come back. Are you including me? You think I've not failed before? I have failed before. People even made castigating statements about me. Am I a failure now? I'm globally celebrated with all humility before God. But just imagine me to be remembering my past failure. I will never be where I am. Nobody looks back while you're driving that will not crash. Whatever you cannot change, I repeat, you forget. What do you do? Okay, you lost somebody. You can't change it. It has happened. Put it behind you and move forward. It won't happen again. You will never lose anyone close to you in the name of Jesus. But in case it happened in the past, put it behind you. Yes, you lost your job. Forget it. Something happened to you. Put it behind you. Move on. Tell yourself, I'll move on. Say it a minute. Say it one more time. Say it like a child of God. Do you want to say positive? Number two, acquire knowledge. Acquire what? Your life will be shaped by what you think and what you think will be a function of what you know. Your life, I say, will be shaped by what you think. And what you think <laughs> will be a function of what you know. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploit. Daniel 11, 32. Knowledge of the truth is what guarantees triumph in life. When you renew your mind with quality information, your life will be transformed. Are you getting me? It's a study to show yourself what? A workman that needed not to be shown rightly divided one or two, second Timothy 2 15. Acquire knowledge to move up. Move from where you are to where you ought to be now. He said, You have dwelt around this mountain long enough. Tell me two, three. Turn you not all. You have stayed at one point. Move to the next level. I see you moving in the name of Jesus. He said, from where thou art, Genesis 13, 14, and 15. Look up. See where God is taking you to and get there. Are you getting me, sir? He said, from where you are now, from this small position where you are, look up from God's scriptures. See where God is taking you to. It was, where's what? Start what? Not what? As far as your eyes can what? He said, as far as you can see from this Bible. Start what? Not what? Is what? Where's what? As far as your eyes can what? He said, I will give it to you. 
Genesis to Malachi, Matthew to Revelation. As far as you can see in this book, what it will give you? It's right here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? The part of the just has shining what? That shines the more to perfect the Proverbs 4 18. Where I read Genesis 13, 14, and 15. Knowledge will influence your thinking pattern. And that will influence your real life. You know why knowledge is powerful? <laughs> it is what you know that will definitely influence what you think and eventually transform your lifestyle. Stop sleeping with problems. Acquire knowledge. Acquire what? Job 36, verse 3. I will fetch my knowledge from afar. So don't wait for knowledge. Seek for it. What do you do? No matter where knowledge is found, go and get it. Go and get what? You know what knowledge is powerful? Listen. I was driving in a car with a man called Dr. Mike Mudok. And we were driving together. And he picked up my book. In between airport to his hotel, he summarized my book and told me the book. He was talking with me, oh. He just like this. By the time I got to the hotel, he told me the summary of the book. So I said, there must be something this man knows I don't know. He just did like this. David, this is a fine book. He was talking, oh. Wonderful book. By the time I got to the hotel, he summarized the book. Less than 30 minutes. So I said, what did this man do to, to flip a book? And from my investigation, I knew that there's a cause he did. I said, whoa. You know, we read, if you want to read one book, so not one week you're not through. So of you two weeks, you are still battling with one book. <laughs> so I say, hey, this man knows something I don't know. So me too, I went to do that course. And I can read the book, no matter the book you give me, in 30 minutes. and understand it. I will prepare, let, before, for me to prepare one message, they will bring some 30 something books and I will read all. <laughs> and understand them. But if it's before, before you finish one. Knowledge was far, but I went there to get it. If you know where to acquire knowledge, don't say it's expensive. Pay for it. He said, I will fetch my knowledge from Ava. Buy the truth and sell it enough. Proverbs 23, 23. Give that challenge mental attention. Give a challenge what? Mental attention. You know why? <laughs> There's no challenge you're going through. Pastor Abiyah told you that you are the first to go through. Any challenge you're going through, someone has gone through it. it. Is There's no temptation taking you, but such is what? Common. First Corinthians 10, 13. So whatever you're going through is common. That's why they call entrance, common entrance. Because it's the first entrance you're going to do from primary school. They call it common entrance. They're telling you that it's very common. My friend, move from there to the next class. That's what they call primary school entrance. What? They call it common because it's very common. Whether you pass or not, you must go to Sunday school. <laughs> Have you seen anybody with this because of entrance? They don't go to Sunday school? No. That's what they call entrance common. There's nobody they say you will not go to Sunday school. Whether you fail or you still go to Sunday school. That's what they call entrance what? Common. So the temptation you're going through is what? Common. He said, there is no temptation. It is common unto man. But God will not, who is faithful, will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. So whatever you are going through, you are going to know you have the capacity to carry it. But with all the temptation, we also make a word of escape. You will escape from that situation. <laughs> Thinking through a problem for solution is different from worrying. Many times the reason why we cannot come out and be positive is because instead of thinking on how to come out of a problem, we think the problem. Let me tell you the first. Many of us, instead of thinking how I can come out of this situation, we think the problem. See, if I don't think the problem, what will I think? Since you have been thinking the problem, have you come out? How can you be thinking things are hard? Now, for instance, in Nigeria, now you'll be thinking say, things are hard. You will die. Because things are hard. So you don't think that things are hard. You think on how you will live in a country where things are hard to succeed. We, you are dwelling on the problem. Don't dwell on the problem. Dwell on the solution. 
Are you getting what God's saying? Let your mind focus on how, what must I do to be under this situation. And then you see yourself going up. You go up. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. A wise man is strong. A man of knowledge what? Increased strength. 24 verse 5. Come, let us reason together. Isaiah 1, 18. So you have the capacity of the mental system of God. He said, come, let us reason. Can you reason with a dog? You, are, you can only reason with a human being like you. So God said, you have what I have. Reason with me. Listen. We pray too much, we don't reason with God. <laughs> As I want it in. Many times what we do, we pray, but we don't reason. God said, let us what? When it comes to success, it's not prayer, it's reasoning. Why am I not succeeding? Why am I failing? What is making me to fail every time? You are reasoning, no? The God tell you, you are failing because you don't even take your business serious. God has not given the spirit of what? Fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So me, I will activate my mind. Say it one more time. Say it like a child of God. Say it and say it one more time. In Job 32 verse 8, but there's a vital force and the spirit of intelligence in man and the breath of the almighty, the amplified version. The breath of the almighty gives man understanding. Think through by engaging the force of intelligence inside you. You have it already. I put your hand here and say, Holy Spirit, let the force of intelligence in me come alive. Say with the Holy Spirit, let the force of intelligence that is already in me come alive in the name of Jesus. So quality thinking with relevant information will affect your life positively. It will affect your life what? Now listen, <laughs> do you know scriptures is very powerful? What made me to prosper? Two scriptures. Let me tell you. That's why your mind is powerful. Before now, when you are a minister of the gospel in Nigeria, for instance, everybody thinks that you have to get assistance from overseas like the United States, mostly. They say, well, you know, let American churches help us. Have you ever had preachers say so? They say, we believe that the American churches will need to help us. Even some people say that these big churches can help the small churches. Have you said so? The big churches were small one day before they became big. The redeemed you're talking started in one small place. The winners you're talking started in one small place. All the big churches started somewhere. So you are not the first to be small. They said, though that beginning was small, the later is a great increase. So yeah. Those all these big churches, they didn't start from big. Nobody came big. They're not Adam. But listen carefully. <laughs> something changed my perspective. That's why you must change this place. I saw from God's word. I'll give you two scriptures. It will, it will change your life. Turn with me to Acts chapter 10, 34, 35. And Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive, God is no respecter of persons. Is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible? But in every nation, including your nation. Where are you hearing me from? He that feared God and walked in righteousness. So God is saying, no matter the nation you are, you are not disadvantaged. God is no respecter of persons. In every nation, including your nation. My mind sparked. I said, that means no matter where I am, I will not be a local champion. So it is not going to America that makes you a great man. It is not going to UK that makes you a great man. It's not moving from UK to America that makes you a great man. No matter where you are, you can be great. From here. From where? Take an alligator. I'm not an alligator. Let me say lizard. No lizard? So they don't, some people don't know lizard. So I don't want to use lizard because in Germany, they don't have lizard. A German came, it was in Nigeria, they saw lizard first. So I don't like using lizard because they don't have lizard in Germany. No, you use that. Some parts of the world, they don't have lizard. When the man saw lizard, he was shocked. He said, what is this? It's a lizard. He said, I've never seen it in my life. <laughs> so I don't, I don't like using lizard. Can you take alligators everywhere? Can you take an alligator 
from Nigeria and take him to America and becomes a crocodile. It will still be an alligator. If you fail in your country, if you go so you see fail. Seven years renewed. I said where? Nations don't make people, it's people that make nations. Turn with me to Romans chapter 10. <laughs> Say mind. Tell yourself mind. You want to stay up? Renew your mind. For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Did you hear that? There's no difference between the Nigerian and the Ghanaian. There's no difference between the Togolese and the American. There's no difference between the British man and the Mexican. There's no difference. The same blood of Jesus brought all of us. It's right here. For the same Lord over all the streets of the world that call upon him. There's no difference between the Nigerian and American. I'm privileged to travel around the entire globe. One day, I went to the United States of America and a great man was talking to me, politically tough and a preacher. He said, Pastor, we... We, we have a serious problem. This building is on a mortgage. And if we don't pay, they will take it from us. I smiled. <laughs> then my mind flashed back to what Nigerians do with them. Nigerians depend on them to help. Because when Nigerians have problems, they write to American countries, they say, help us. And they help them. So I said, now I'll prove that God is no respecter of business. So I said, I can't be alive and the church of Jesus closed. Follow me to the bank. He flew me to his own American bank. My own money, not church. And I gave him $100,000. He used two hands to shake me. God is no respecter. You know where it came from? From here. From where? From mine. From where? But if I didn't renew my mind, I would say, how? Oh, from Africa, this man has to help me. But my mind is renewed, so I have to help him. And I used to say long ago that I will help Americans. I don't know if you have heard me before. Yes, yes. Tomorrow I will still be helping them. Yes, From where? Mine. What makes you think that your brother in the U.S. should be the one to sponsor you? Are you handicapped? Do you know how they, they live there? They have bills pile up. If you know how they live there, you'll be asking them for assistance. In this part of the world, you don't have light. It's not a news. <laughs> if you don't have light there, everybody will know something is wrong. That you have not paid. Car is on mortgage. House is on mortgage. It may not let their life on mortgage. And you're worrying them up and down. No, leave them. Most of them, you need to pray for them because the bills are like this. My friend, if you want to be successful, your mind must be renewed. Where must be renewed? No prayer can change your life until your mind changes. Are you getting what I'm talking about? You have to upgrade your mind to upgrade your life. To improve, you must change your thinking pattern. You must change your what? Pattern. Now, the women hear me. <laughs> women hear me. How many of you have still like this? Say, I wish I was a man. Have you ever said it in your heart? Say the truth. Say the truth before God. Have you ever said it? Have you ever said it? I wish I was a man. That never think it. It's not correct. It's not biblical. It's not scriptural. It's demonic. It's satanic. It's oppressive. Galatians 2 28. Every woman hear this. Listen, in marriage, the man is the head. But in success, the man and woman are equal. From Bible. And the man is only the head of his wife, not the head of any other woman. Even as your pastor, I'm the head of only this woman. I'm not the head of any other woman. Please read your Bible. Well. Don't go and say, don't you know you're a woman? She's not your wife. Read your Bible. I know this male chauvinist will not agree. There is neither Jew nor Greek. This is your Bible. I don't care where you're coming from. There's neither born nor free. There's neither male nor female, for ye are all one. Am I the one that wrote the Bible? 
He said the man and woman are one. We are equal. But have you not heard people say, I wish I was a man. I know this position I would have occupied it. Who told you? There are women who are presidents. Change here. You can never be at the top as a woman if your mind is not upgraded. So I hear. <laughs> are you getting blessed? Yes. What we are doing is mental warfare. It's the strongest warfare. It's the strongest what? You know why some of you are poor? It's the devil. It's the devil. It's your mind. Even when you're praying, Father, Father, I want to be rich. I want to be, bless me. Then, then now, God now opened up for you. So there's a contract of 15 billion. He said, 15 billion. <laughs> you just pray though, that God should bless you. He said, 15 billion. It's not from you. <laughs> God will look at you and say, Chai. He said, what about that? My uncle, who is a politician? I think it's for him. God said, eh? hey, Lazarus. <laughs> but you just pray, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, bless me, bless me, bless me. And God said, now I'm going to bless you. That's why your mind must be renewed before wealth should come. If your mind is not renewed, wealth comes, <laughs> you will be a stupid person. In Genesis chapter 49, 3 and 4, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my mind. And the beauty of my strength, the excellence of dignity and the excellence of power, unstable as water, that shall not what? Excel. To go, not to go. Possibility mentality is the answer. You cannot change a man, a people, a nation, without changing the thinking pattern of the man, people or nation. You know why? What quality information does is to renew your mind to transform your life. Philippians 4, 18, 8. Now, I'm going to tell you a practical thing. We tell you. To tell you, I want to be very practical in my teaching. Mind is powerful. Mind is what? Do you know, life story, I'm going to remember, if you have lived in Europe for too long and you move to America, you have a problem. Because Europe road is small. Rooms are small. Everything is small. Now, when you get to America, everything is big. There are life stories. There are people who have lived in Europe. Life story. Somebody left from Europe and went to America. And they gave a big house. The person said, no, this house is too big. So they both folded their hands. So what are you talking? This is a normal house. This house is big. Because the person was used to two steps, house room full. So the person's mind could not adjust to a big environment. The person said, no, 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 no. This house is too big. The person said, it's too big. So the Americans were wondering, are you saying this house is big? This is a normal house. But the, where the person is coming from, the mind has held the person captive. They brought a big car. The person shouted and said, this car is too big. Because they are used to small, small cars. If, for instance, you are born in a river run area and they carry to Korea land. And they say, this is your land. You do like this. They say, no, 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 no. You have to break out of your mind. Are you hearing me? Now, life story. Life story that happened in the Orient. I've shared this story over and over. Mind is powerful. A man was fishing. I've shared this story before. As he was fishing, when he, anytime he, he caught a big fish, big fish, he would throw it back to the water. But every small fish he caught, he put into the boat. When he caught a big one, he put it back to the water. So someone was watching him. Why was he throwing the big fishes back and putting the small ones inside? So they called him and said, sir, we'll be watching you. He said, you know what? I don't have a big frying pan. <laughs> so many people have what? Small frying pan. From their mind. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Two of my domestic staff walked to me. <laughs> and I asked them, I said, what do you want? <laughs> I was trying their mentality. I, one told me something, I looked at him. <laughs> I said, is that all you want? He said, yes. I said, this is all you want? He said, yes. That was his, uh, <laughs> 
do this for me. So I laughed. The one who asked me for the big thing, I understood, you understood my teaching. That was asking me something that I have passed 20 years ago. There's nothing in this world that can make me give you 10,000 naira. I will see it as an abuse. Carry 10,000. That's your, it came to me, you sent me all your problems, and I said, I take 10,000 naira. I won't do that. No matter how the country is. Now, you just imagine you came to me, you have privilege to meet me, then you, all you have to explain it. He says, I only 10,000 naira I need. <laughs> You have what? Frying pan mentality. <laughs> that is how many of us approach God. Father, you are the Almighty. You call him on the name so omnipotent, omniscient, omni Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah provider. Father, one room in Diop. <laughs> God, look at you and say, Me, the Almighty God. If you wanted one room, meet your neighbor. <laughs> if it's me, ask me for something big. Anything not big is not from God. You think it, I have a very big God. Oh. It's always by my side. A very big God. Oh. But you ask it small, small, small. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Say so I refuse to ask my big God any small thing. Now, listen carefully. You read one scripture, Ephesians 3.20. God is able to do? Above? All that what? Ask his prayer. Your thinking is equal with your action. So if you are praying, oh God bless me, and you are thinking, how can I be blessed in Nigeria? You have spoiled the prayer. You are what? You have counseled the prayers. <laughs> oh God, oh God, oh God, make me great, make they say, how can I be great in this country? <laughs> Are you hearing me? I conquered the world from my mind. First. Are you getting what I'm saying? My wife is a witness. When I travel, because if you meet an average American, they are very, somehow, it will shake you like this and say, I'm an American. That's the first of the time I'm an American. Then if you are not careful, say, I'm an African. <laughs> <laughs> so when they shake me like that, I'm an American, I say, well, I'm David Biomi. I will never tell you anything. I'll give you my name. And I say, can you Google my name? Then when they Google, they say, oh, you're a celebrity. I said, thank you. I said, before you type my name, three figures, it has come up, pop. They said, oh, you celebrate. I said, thank you. Because it's not the nation, it's the person. It's who? The person. From where? From where? That's why I tell you that your mind must first conquer anything first. If your mind has not conquered it, your life can't conquer it. Number three. I mean, I'm getting blessed here. Say, I'll stay positive. Say it one more time. Say it like a child of God. Even if you want to marry, stay positive. Don't think that you got married one year just man because you suffered it too much. Look at your life and say, I'll marry a good man. Don't say, I'll marry anything where God give me. No. Anything will come, I go just agree. No. No. Should I worry? No. Get the truth, number three. <laughs> Amen. Get the true picture of who you are from God's word. They've talked so much on this, but I've just shared short on it. Get, if you want to stay positive, get the what? True picture of who you are from God's word. Now, you can't go beyond your true self-portrait. <laughs> what did I say? You can't go beyond your true self-portrait. Let me ask you, how do you see yourself? 
I ask you again, how do you see yourself? Hmm? Numbers 23, Numbers 13, sorry, Numbers 13, 27 to 33. And they, there were 12 spies, 12 what? Take note of, if you can grasp what I'm about to say now, it will change your life. And they told him and said, we came unto the land, that's Moses who sent the 12 spies, with that thou sentest us, and surely it flowed, he had it, surely it flowed with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of that means they had the proof. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And remember, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. 30. Look at it carefully. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. We are capable of, of overtaking this place. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Where are they talking from? From where? This country is too hard. Nothing can we do. Nothing, nothing. But look at verse 32. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they have sight of the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to set it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants. If it is people, how did they go there? If the land was eating people, how did they go to bring milk and honey? All the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Let's do three, every one of us together want to go. And there we saw the giants. The sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were, stop, stop, take it gently, stop, don't, don't. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. It is what you call yourself, people call you. We were in our sight as grasshoppers. Don't you know, poor me. That's why everyone look at you and say, poor Okon. Nobody will give you a name you didn't call yourself. Do you know why they call this part of the world third, third world? They call themselves third world. When they go to United Nations, they beg. They say, no, we are the underdeveloped nations. There's a president talking to another president. Based on our underdevelopment, we need you, the developed nations, to assist us. So they say, well, the underdeveloped nations, we are going to assist you. As a child of God, how do you see yourself? Some of you, if you make slangs like, oh, guys, I'm broke, poor me. Poor you. Poor you. So they call you Mr. The 12 spies, listen, look at them. 10 had faith in the giants. Two had faith in God. 10 were giant conscious. Two were God conscious. 10 were grasshoppers. Two were giant killers. Your conversation will reveal who you are. When you see a man or woman talk, you can know what the person things. Just converse with somebody for two minutes, you will know how the person reasons. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Losers talk about problems, obstacles, disease, failure, defeat, what the devil can do. Winners talk about God's power, health, opportunities. Stop talking like a victim and start talking like a victor. Winners have sonship mentality. Losers have slave ship mentality. Grasshoppers mentality will destroy your faith. It will make you to keep hopping. Cultivate the mind of Christ. Focus your mind on God's word and not on problems. Mind what goes on in your mind. 
Let me ask you, what do you think about yourself? <laughs> Stop walking by people's opinion. Stop what? Nobody's opinion should be your determining factor. Are you getting me? Because man's opinion is wrong. If my father was alive, he would never believe I am well. If they woke him from the grave, say your son is the one shaking the world, he would say it's a lie. Even your parents, the opinion about you is not correct. The true picture of yourself is this book. Even David's father had the wrong opinion about him. Jesse never mentioned David's name. So even your parents, the opinion about you is wrong. Paint your picture from scripture to have a future. Don't allow Satan flood your mind with negative thoughts. Are you getting me now? Only accept what God has said about you from his word. Dare to stay up in your mentality. So stay up. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Say up one more time. Now, mind is powerful. When we started church in Port Harcourt, they came to me, they said, no church can be big in Port Harcourt. I smiled. I said, where I'm coming from in Lagos, churches are big. So it's possible to have a big church in Port Harcourt. They said, no, not Port Harcourt, not Port Harcourt. Port Harcourt people don't. I said, you will see it. I conquered it first from here. They said, Port Harcourt people, no, but they don't go to church. I said, they will go to church. Because nowhere where there's solution, people will not go. Our first service will be 6 a.m. By 6.30, you won't get a seat in the hall. You will not get any seat in this hall. You stay on the main road. From here. From where? Oh my. I conquered it from here. Why must you be thinking because your shop is at the one corner, they will not come? Okay, let me humble you. No witch doctor stays in township. They stay inside forest. Yet with their demonic things, people go to the forest. Then you mean you have the almighty God. Have you seen any Habalis on any highway? How did the rich men know their places? Then you a child of God. I wish our church is on the main road. My friend, any corner. Jesus was where in the wilderness, true? They went to meet him there. Thank you. Where was John the Baptist? Did they meet him? From today, they will look for you. Just change your mental. People travel from all over the world to come to service here. From all, there's no Sunday that there will be no one person who will say, I came from Germany to worship. I came from flying. You know. I just came from the United States to be a part of this service. You blessed us, and I'm going back to you. say, When I go back, the next two days, I'll be back. I live in New York. I, I stay in Germany. It's a I stay in Switzerland. It's a regular thing. Hello. No hospital is far for the sick. Are you hearing me? From where? Right. You have prayed enough. Oh. Stop praying now. Start changing here. You can never come out of poverty with prayer. It's from here. Did you hear what KK said? He said, we are talking millions. And I switched his, I, I only consciously shifted his mind to think billions. That's all I did. I said, you can't be close to me. I'm talking talk, think millions. I didn't say that the issue, that it has to be, no. I just, it's from me. I was trying to upgrade his mind. I just said, move from talking millions to talking billions. And immediately his mind changed. I consciously did it to change his mind, way of thinking. Because he's close to me. I said, no, no, no. Stop thinking millions. Now start thinking billions. I did it on purpose to push him up. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's why you must not converse with fools. They will, they will destroy your mental system. Every time you converse with fools, they think they're talking. They, they affect your mind. If you talk, they won't understand. One statement from a Yedek book can move me like this. Cap! And one statement from a fool can take you down. That's why who talks with you dominates your thought. Stop listening to people who have nothing to offer your mind. Mind is powerful. Talk with a person who stirs you up. Everything you're thinking is up. 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 And if you talk to somebody who's so stupid, they'll keep telling you, bringing you down. You know things are tough. Nothing's working. In fact, it's, it's one kind. It will affect you. 
When I sit with my mentor, for one second, my mind goes like. You tell me, David, it can be done. If you talk with me with one minute, I will challenge you. No matter how down you are, I will push you up. Mind who you hang around with. An ego must not hang around the vulture. Finally, number four. Are you hearing me? I've seen people who came to this church poor and by my way of talking, they just changed. They changed their perspective. They said, wow, no, I can't be thinking like this. I think big, think big, think big. And then they became big. You will be very big. Yeah. By next glory reign, the world will be surprised at where you are. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you are now, but this time next year, you will be far bigger than this size in the name of Jesus. Then number four, I close. This time I close. <laughs> I won't go beyond number four. Said. <laughs> Think miracle thoughts. Think what? <laughs> it will be the shortest one. Think what? In Isaiah 26, verse 3, thou will keep him in perfect Perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Whose mind is stayed, I'm going to dwell on this, stayed on thee. Listen. <laughs> Great victories, triumphs, endless signs and wonders are the experiences of those whose minds are stayed on God's word. I'm going to explain this to you. It's very powerful. Listen carefully. I'll use the man Abraham. This is where many of us, either you fail here or you succeed here. Listen carefully. In Romans chapter 4, 17 to 21, listen carefully. If you can grasp this, your life will shift. It said, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Who is speaking to who? God Abraham. Before he whom he believed, even God would quicken the dead and call it those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that it might become the father of what? According to that which was spoken, so shall I see be. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, not the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not. Where, does you, where do you stagger from? From here. Nature came to him and said, You are old. I'm going to be very practical in my teaching. Say, Abraham, forget you. You're already potent. You can't have a child. He said, no. God said, I'll have. Which mind is stayed on thee? I come again. <laughs> it staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. That, and being fully persuaded that what he has promised, was able to perform. Do you understand? This is what happens. You think Abraham did not battle? Every battle Abraham fought was here. Nature was against him. If it's today, science was against him at all age. So the thought came, you will never have a child. You're already old. But his mind said, no, God spoke. My mind is not shifting. God has said so. Satan came to him and said, you, God said so. You're already old. Forget it. You're already potent. How do you pregnant a woman? He said, no, God said so. So everything that can want to contradict God's word, your mind must not shift. Yeah. I mean, understand what I'm saying? Yes, so many things will flood your mind, but put your mind on the word. And say, God, if you say so, that is it. You will never be defeated. Are you getting me? Now listen. <laughs> If you think that why I'm relaxed concerning the, the cathedral, when they bring bills, I heard Pastor Sanders said, even when they talk to me, they are shaking. They say, ah, but I'm relaxed. You know why? My mind is fixed on the word. My God shall supply all my needs. 
I will build my church. So I am not the builder. And the builder cannot leave his project abandoned. So when they talk, I said, owner, build. When they say, this thing will cost $10 million, I say, owner, provide. When they say, they say, this will cost $7 million, because they call the dollars, I say, they call it one another. I say, owner, provide. And I've never shifted to have any fear. Will the sources come? It has always come. Did God tell you anything? Why are you shaking? Landlord give you notice to quit. And you are a faithful covenant practitioner. One hour is too much for God. One hour is what? One hour is too much. <laughs> anything God says to you, don't shift here. He said, whose mind is stayed on thee? Abraham taught above the circumstance. He stood on the faithfulness and integrity of God and his word. That's where I'm going. And he received the miracle at the end. When the thing flows your mind, stay on the integrity and faithfulness of God's word. Miracle must be born. The woman with the issue of blood said, if I may touch why did she say so? From my mind. So the miracle was processed from here. From where? From where? From my mind. <laughs> where did the miracle proceed from? From here. Hmm? Now listen. There's a young man who broke his testimony. We were in Italy and he served us in Italy. And he said, sir, this is my problem. For 20 something years, I smiled. I said, before this year is over, all your papers and documents will be signed. He had to dissect the testimony to code it because of one or two things. He came with the documents. To he said, that is it. I've gotten everything I need. My mind was on it that he can't serve me and not be blessed. So when he told me all the contradicted things, I said, before this year is over, have you not prayed? And then you said, the prayer you prayed was not working. Stand on the integrity of the word. If he says he took my infirmities, even when you see the eyes yellow, say he took. So that will come to you and say, he said he took, see your eyes. Tell him he took. He said if you took, then why are your eyes yellow? There's a young man here, stand up, let them see you. You see this pastor? Look at him. This man, if you see him three years ago, three years or two years ago, how many years? Three years ago, he was a dead man. You'll be afraid to look at his eyes. Doctors gave up on him. I didn't say you leave out everything. All the organs packed up. Every organ in him packed up. He was looking fearful. Doctors said he can't live. In Abuja. And he came to the hotel room. And I said, listen, pastor, you will not die. To move was a problem. Physical move. He was giving up to die. Satan will flood my mind. You prayed for him, but he will die. You, you, think, you think men of God will don't battle? <laughs> it's a lie. He said, I think you prayed for him. He will die. I said, shut up. Himself. He came again. If you took, call him now. He, is he not dying? <laughs> Sit down. I will call the phone. I said, Joel, don't give up. You will leave. And I said, look at the Bible. He will look. I said, don't give up. Stand on the text of God's word. He will come back again and say, if you like, pray to him. He will die. <laughs> Whose mind is dead on thee? I stood on the word. He shook, shook. I said, no, young man, you will leave. One day I told him, I said, you have not even done half of your assignment. So you won't die. And that was how he walked out of death. 
Has God told you anything? Refuse to shake here. Refuse to what? Stand on the integrity of the word. Did God say you shall learn to nations? Forget you may be looking like somebody who is poor today. Stand that you will learn to nations. Don't say, how will I learn to nation? When even the nations don't know me. Stand on the word. Stand what? When we started five nights of glory, <laughs> before we started, we were doing some other meetings, and one day I saw that it shall come from afar, from the east, from the west, from the north. And he told me, have they come? He told me, <laughs> if you say they come from afar, where are they? Look now, everybody here, they are from Portacot, from Fafaya. <laughs> I said, shut up, they will come. Today now, we have all nations of all kinds hooked up and pleasant. From where? Brother, no miracle can be born if you shake here. Are you hearing me? You are prayed enough, but know why it is not working? You are shaking here. How can I be a millionaire? Me. Familiar me? Yele. <laughs> Milonia. I'm from Agbonchia. Agbonchia. <laughs> and in Agbonchia, no Milonia. Agbonchia is a village in Eleme. Eleme is one small place like that in, on the map. Yele. Jabo Doja or Jaka. They say, Yele. How can me from Bolo? Brother. You are too big to be a failure. Your miracle will start today. Whatever God has said about you, don't doubt it. If he says you shall be big, see yourself as a big person. <laughs> are you hearing me? I told them yesterday, I have a way of talking to young men around me. I say if you want to be a very wealthy man, what is the picture you should have? They put coins on a drawing. I said, no, rich people don't put coins. I said, remove the coins. Put a man on a chair who is very executive. The picture of that shows that you want to be big. Coins show that you're a poor man. You will never see rich people with coins. Have you seen any wealthy man with coins before? Even your country, why do you use coins? You see wealthy people with coins? They just put the coins. They, say, they throw it inside one piece. They say, anybody who like it? They just throw it. Rich people don't carry coins. Say the truth. Have you seen any rich people carry coins? It's poor people that carry coins. Say the truth. You have piggy piggy for coins. <laughs> from where? Do you know from childhood, I don't eat with plate. I eat with breakable plate. You know this hospital plate? If you like, be the most expensive, I won't eat with it. You know why? It's poverty mentality. He said, if the, if the plate break, the body should like to break. Let them break it from childhood. Why will you be eating from plate that will make it kinky like as if you are sick? <laughs> Is poverty what? He said, the plate will break. Let the child learn to use breakable plate from childhood. So that he will learn to know how to preserve good things. Hello. You're not giving pam, 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 pam. So from, from childhood, his mentality is what? Mind is what? Well, <laughs> you are born into a world of limitless opportunities. So take off the limitations in your mentality. The world is waiting for you. It's my prayer you will emerge a new man and woman in Jesus' name. Yes. Say with me, redemption has made me a man and woman of great value. I'm not going to accept mediocrity. I have what it takes to stay up. I have the mind of Christ. The very first behind creation is my turn to stay up. The top is my destination. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. How many want to stay up? 
Where do you stay from? Now, what I said yesterday is tomorrow I'm going to teach it. <laughs> For you to stay up, one, you must be blessed. You must be what? Two, you must upgrade this mind. After this mind is upgraded, there's something you need to do. There must be a spiritual compass. They call it GPS. If you don't have a GPS, you miss your road. So I'll tell you tomorrow how to get the right GPS. How to get the right what? Because if you're traveling and you don't know the road, you will miss your road. So I'll tell you how to know where you're going. By tomorrow, I'll tell you, you know. When I went to United States, they told me to stay, true? <laughs> they said I should stay because of the grace I carried. I said, no, I won't stay. <laughs> I will not stay in the United States. I, I'm not called to stay here. They say, Pastor, the kind of anointing you have, if you stay here, you blow. I said, God did not call me to be in America. There are people in America who should stay in America. But if I didn't know my left from my right, I would have stayed because of dollar. <laughs> there are people sent to America. I'm not sent there. That's why from here, I'm speaking to the entire globe. Everybody has a place. Find out tomorrow. If you are somewhere, I said that you are in UK does not mean life will be okay. That you are in the United States does not mean if you don't know what to do, you'll be useless. Find out tomorrow. Find out what? That is every one of us must shine after tomorrow. You just be at top. you be at what? Top. I'm going to tell you some things you won't read from any book. That you just be there. You are just there. No struggle. Does the eagle struggle to fly? You know his secret? I'll tell you tomorrow. He calculates the direction of the wind. So if you want to be an eagle Christian, you don't need to kill yourself. <laughs> it is not how you work hard that means how you succeed. There are people who do three, four jobs in the Western world, yet they are poor. It's not the number of jobs you do, it's what you know. Are you getting me, sir? How can I be in Nigeria and be giving dollars to Americans? Where did I get the dollar from? I'm not a thief. You should know there's something I know. There's something what? By the, the, on the internet, they say I'm um, so, so, so millions of dollars. I see it as an insult. They rated me as the fourth richest preacher in this part of the world. I see it as an insult. Because you can't, you can't equate my wealth according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Yes. So I can't, I can't be equated by the wealth of the world. No. Including you. Yes. You are too wealthy. Too what? You are too rich. You are the one who does not know. Tomorrow I will tell you. You are too rich. Too rich. I will tell you tomorrow. Your eyes will do like that. You say, oh boy, now so I get money here. Now they come back money here. Let me broke it. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? If you miss tomorrow, you miss 50% of your life. A professor was moving with a young boy. And two of them were paddling on the boat. While they were paddling, the professor looked at the boy and said, Boy, where that change? He said, Do you know anything about astronomy? The boy said, No. He said, You have missed 25% of your life. While they were going again, the man carried a stone. He said, Do you know anything about geology? The boy said, No. He said, You have made 50% of your life. As you are going again, they carry the leaf. He said, do you know anything about botany? The boy said, no. He said, you have missed 75% of your life. And as you are going, water began to enter the boat. And I said, professor. <laughs> the, boy, the boy now asked the professor, I said, professor, do you know anything about swimming? <laughs> do you know about swimming? The boy said, no. He said, you have missed 100%. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you have talked theory, 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 theory. Tomorrow, I'll tell you practicals. I'll tell you what? You have talked theory, 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 theory. All these philosophies we have been talking. Tomorrow, I'll tell you practical. How not to talk theory? How not to talk? You will succeed, though. Just imagine if the body of Christ is in charge globally. Can anybody toy with us? No, but I bet you you will take charge. Just imagine every one of us now shining. Can anybody insult us? Now, from my heart, I pray for you, you will take charge. I don't care the level where you are, I decree a change of position in the name of Jesus. We are going to pray three prayers. Prayer point number one. By the blood of Jesus, Christ will destroy every negative imagination contending with your glorious destiny. He said, casting down. Look at the scripture. Casting down image. You know what imagination? Image formation. Something that has formed an image in your mind. You unconsciously, you just form image of poverty. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And every idea is always against the knowledge of God. I'm bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. He said, as for thee also, by the blood of covenant, you have to send for the prayer to the people that has no what? Water. Zechariah 9 verse 11. You are going to say, by the blood of anything that has held my mind captive, I cast it down. Get out of my mind. Get out of my what? Get out of my mind. Satan will battle. I think you hear me. He will battle with you. He will say, you will not make it. Forget what Pastor David is talking. You will still be a poor man. He said, get out! He said, you will fail. Oh yeah, you will fail. If you won't fail, see your brother fail. Your grandfather fail. Your great-grandfather fail. Is it you that will not fail? You fail. He said, shut up! I can't fail. You cast it down. He says, you're going. Will you be able to pay your bills? Okay, your bills are piled up. He said, get out! My mind. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Sit down in the name of Jesus. Jesus, mighty name. I hear God. The Holy Ghost said, share your testimony for them to pray for the next prayer. When God told me to come to Port Harcourt, the first thing that battled was, people told me, they said, there are only two cities where people can make it. Lagos and Abuja. They said, and every big church suddenly is in those two places. They said, you can't make it. The voice kept coming. You can't, even if you've been in Port Harcourt, you'll be an average person. But to be big, not in Portugal, but from my mind, I broke out. We are one of the wealthiest churches on earth. So it's not the location, it's the mind. He said, if you are not in Lagos, no way. And if you watch very well now, almost all the big churches are in Lagos. It is the only church. And then, okay, now we're in worry. That are outside Lagos and Abuja that are rich. So in case, Pastor, you're here, you are outside Lagos and Abuja, don't think your place is bad. It's from your mind, though. If you begin to think, if I'm in a Lauren, hey, not a Lauren, poverty has started. Okay, your village where you are, the rich people, don't they come home for a weekend? So when they come home, where do they, what do they drop off? It's not in that place. Thank you. In that village, are there no money lenders? Number two, prayer. 
you ask to receive the help of the Holy Spirit. The help of who? To always think in line with Philippians 4, 8. Acts shall be given six, shall not, shall be open. So Lord, Holy Spirit, help me to think in line with Philippians 4. What is Philippians 4? Finally, brother, what's about things that are true? What's about things that are honest? What's about, you read the whole scripture for time's sake. Anything according to this, Holy Spirit, don't allow me to think it. May I think in line with Philippians 4, 8. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Finally, Holy Spirit, steer my mind with creative and innovative thoughts. Creative and what? That will make me to stay up and excel in all my endeavors. Job 32 verse 8. But there's a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty give them understand. Inspire me. Because idea. Inspire me and make me very creative. Are you hearing me now? That you will never be an average person. Go ahead and pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Inspire me and make me very creative. Thank you, Lord. May your thoughts become creative. Yeah. Very simple. The easiest way to come out of poverty, even if you give, you may still not be rich, is move yourself from the point of always wanting to receive to the point of always want to give. Poverty will leave you. Just reposition yourself and say it from your mind. No, I always like to collect from people. Now I want to start giving to people. Just swab it. The way from your mind, you say, no, 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 I like to collect. That's why I'm not rich. Check if your mind is only thinking of collecting, you will never be rich. Once your mind shifts to say, I want to start giving to people, from the level where you are, immediately you come out of poverty. Poverty will never leave you as long as you're always putting yourself to collect, to collect. You'll be poor. Just switch in your mind. I want to start giving. At this point, once you go that way, your mind just goes, pop! And there's a shift. I want to give. I want to give. I want to give. I want to give. That's like your cup. Why is America the wealthiest nation? They are the highest giving nation on earth. Why is Africa very poor? To collect. <laughs> Check every man in your family who is very held wealthy is a free-handed person. And check everyone who is very poor. From where? I won't collect something. 
why you don't want to give something? From today, you will never be poor. <laughs> Break out in the name of Jesus. And as your mind is stayed on miracle, the man said, if I may touch the aim of his garment, I shall be whole. Whatever your mind conceived from now becomes a reality in your life. Yeah. Mind is powerful. Mind is what? <laughs> Do you know you marry from here first? Just see the kind of man you want to marry. God will give you. Don't see nonsense man. Don't say anything it's from here. Just look at the kind of man and say, this is the kind of man I want to marry. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. When Hannah was asking, she said, give me a male child from her mind. I, this is the kind of child I want, not nonsense. Samuel came as what she perceived and imagined. He said, that which they have imagined to do. What is your imagination? How can you sit down like this and be see yourself begging from people? No, now, no. Today, break out of it in the name of Jesus. Before glory reign, do you know what I imagine? Let me open up to you. I imagine that everybody come to glory must be blessed. I, I imagine that nobody comes and remains the same. If you watch why I preach, pray yesterday, you know it's not from here, it's from here. I'm from my heart. No matter where you are in any part of the world, I pronounce you, please, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> By this time next year, as Jesus tarries, everybody will see and hear you imagine in the name of Jesus. <laughs> 